Hey guys, Dan with Great Overland. I uh, wanted to take a couple minutes today to talk to you guys about our battery pack. So what I have here in my hand is a Lithionix Boss 302 battery. It's 305 amp hours. Uh, I don't know why they called it a 302. Kind of rolls off the tongue a little nicer. Sounds cool if you call it a Boss. Like a Boss, right? Um, this battery is awesome. This is what goes into every one of our Link 148 all-wheel drive camper vans. Um, that is RVIA certified and on the Ford Transit chassis. Why would we put in only 305 amp hours or 3,900 watt hours? There's a big reason. We can recharge it really fast and it's a small package, which means it takes up less space and it's lighter, but we're still getting really long run times out of it. So let's talk through a couple of those points. One, Lithionics is manufactured in the US and it's put in a metal box, safety wise. So if this thing were in an accident, <clears throat> obviously we'd never want anyone to be in an accident, but if this thing got shook around in a van and stuff hit into it, it's gonna be less likely to take damage and therefore protect those lithium uh, battery plates and less likely to um, overheat and start a fire inside this battery pack. A second thing, this thing can accept a charge way faster than most battery packs on the market. Um, so it can receive a charge up to 200 amps. They suggest 150 amps an hour continuously. Um, our system that we have, the dual alternators off of the Ford, will charge it up to 200 amp hours, which means it can receive a charge very fast and at a very high rate. What does that mean for the end user? So we run this, it's 12 volts and nobody else in the industry is doing this really. 12 volts at you know, 150 to 200 amps running back to this battery pack, and then a 12 volt air conditioner on the rooftop, that Dometic RTX that we install. On one charge of this tiny battery pack, you can run that uh, Dometic air conditioner for 15 to 16 hours on eco mode, or five to six hours on maxed out high with just this one battery pack. For somebody who is gonna be off grid for a long time or they need that extra power, we can easily expand because this is small. Um, we can add a second one of these into that system and it's still UL listed. So you can have a total of just about 8,000 watt hours of battery. And now you've got a runtime on your air conditioner of 30 hours down to about 10 to 12 hours on high. Um, because of the insulation system that we use in our vans, that Dometic RTX 2000 is actually very, very adequate for that van, and it will keep it very comfortable in there, even in temps up to 9,500 degrees. What else do we love about this battery pack? It's super light. This thing weighs about 70 pounds, just under 70 pounds. So if you're looking at some of the other vans out there that are putting in eight, nine, 13,000 watt hours, that is a huge battery pack. It's super heavy. Well, long-term wise, that adds extra weight to your van, to your chassis, your brakes, your rotors, your suspension system, overloading the chassis. Our vans roll out of the factory with a full tank of gas and a full tank of water, that's 22 gallons of fresh water, at 79.50. And the GVWR on a Ford Transit chassis that we, um, that we build out is 9,500 pounds. So we've given you about 15, 1,600 pounds of available payload capacity, depending on whether you get an S4 or an S2. Um, the other thing we love about these, the discharge current in them is fantastic. So we can actually run a 3,000 watt Victron inverter off of this thing. And we very rarely hit the ceiling of that unless we're pushing two very strong devices like our induction cooktop and the microwave at the same time. But pretty much anything else, it'll run. Uh, with zero issues. What else do we love about this? It's heated. Okay, if you are new to the van industry, thinking DIY or do I want to build something else, this is why we've thought through this process over the last six years and um, really found the best way to do this. So a heated battery pack, yes, it's inside a heated van. Let me give you a scenario where this really comes into play. Um, the van's been sitting on the side of my house or it's been sitting in the driveway. It's cold. I haven't been using it as an RV. Uh, it's winterized, so I don't need to worry about it getting cold. And then I go out and I want to start it up and I want the battery pack to be able to um, discharge and receive a charge. 
Now, the thing with lithium, if you're not ex uh, experienced in this or haven't learned this yet, hopefully this helps. Lithium will still discharge when it's very cold. It will not receive a charge well when it's very cold though. So the biggest problem is, now say the battery pack is cold and I turn on the lights and I turn on the inverter, it will do all of those things, but it will run itself dead before it can ex um, actually receive a charge. This is the beauty of the heated battery pack. It will pull energy from the system to heat itself up. But now instead of just counting on the ambient environment from turning on my Timberline heater, um, it is actually heating from the inside of the pack and gets up to temp to receive a charge much quicker. So you get a system that is ready to be fully functional in a very short period of time instead of having to wait on that ambient temperature heating. Um, another thing we love about this, and this is really kind of the clutch piece of the Lithionics Boss 302. This thing uses what they call never die technology. It's beautiful. The never die technology, um, the reason we fell in love with it is simplicity and reliability. If you guys have been following us for a while, you've been watching our stuff, it's all about ease of use, simplicity, durability, and reliability. So what never die technology does is if you take this battery pack and you were to say like a motorcycle, have a reserve tank and say this is 10%. When the battery, I know that the plates are not like that. I'm <laughs> but just kind of like if we imagined this like a gas tank and you got down to that last 10%, the never die system will actually turn itself off and protect itself from going all the way dead. So there's a big difference between a lithium iron phosphate battery and like say a cell phone, for example, the chemistry in the batteries is different. A cell phone, you can run o dead over and over and over and it doesn't damage the battery. It's not a problem for it. In fact, sometimes they want you to run it dead and then recharge it all the way up. A lithium iron phosphate battery is very different. It shouldn't be run dead. Um, it doesn't like to be stored at low like that. And so this is why this never die technology at the 10% shutoff is beautiful. If I'm not paying attention, I'm running my air conditioner because I'm human and it's hot outside and it gets down to 10% the battery will shut itself off and it will shut the system down to protect itself. Then when I come back over or get back into the van um, and I turn the system on, I just look at the touch screen in our vans and <laughs> actually doing it mentally here. Um, when you get into the van, I can turn on the touch screen. And if I look at the touch screen, it will show 10% state of charge. And that's a trigger to me to go, oh, it's at 10% state of charge. And I had to turn the system on. I must have let it run down on accident. So at that point, I've got three ways to charge a Link 148 all wheel drive from us. Um, you can plug it into shore power. You can turn on the van, which is the easiest one to do, drive it around or just let it idle. That's the other beauty of the 12 volts that we use with this is you don't have to high idle it. It can just idle and it will charge at a high rate, even just that way sitting there and also it's not um be because we're running a gas motor in the ford transit it's not building up in your, your dpf if you're if you're familiar with sprinters or diesel trucks you're familiar with this problem uh, or challenge that if you sit there and idle or high idle one of these mercedes sprinter vans it can fill up your diesel particulate filter um, and cause problems with your def system um, so this doesn't have that problem. You can just sit there and let your gas motor idle and it will recharge this in about 60 to 70 minutes from that 10% state of charge. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is it's also charging from solar as well. Uh, so lots of ways to charge this. Um, some of those fancy 51 volt systems that are out there that are very cool are very complicated and also they don't charge off of solar because that's the technology for solar just isn't there for them yet. Um, so simplicity, durability typically equals reliability. And that's what we've shot here for you guys is just, we're human, we make mistakes and the never die net technology helps you when you are human and you make a mistake and accidentally run your battery down. It protects us from ourselves. 
uh, in the, the case that we need that. So super awesome technology. Just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that. I know this is a long video, but we felt it warranted it because this is such a quality product and that's why we've decided to put it in our every one of our vans. If you'd like to see behind the scenes and what we do, the way we hook this stuff up, come take a tour of the factory. You can schedule it by calling the uh, phone number on our website and reach out to Kirk, our sales guy. If you're gonna be at one of our upcoming events, come check us out, grab some swag. And uh, we'd love to have you sit inside one of our five billion star hotels. And uh, who knows, maybe you end up a link owner at some point.